Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for His church in the air, and then with His church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption. Regardless of its Christian veneer, the basic tenets of Mormonism are in direct conflict with biblical Christianity. The following piece of animation, based directly on actual Mormon publications, highlights these major doctrinal differences. Mormonism teaches that trillions of planets scattered throughout the cosmos are ruled by countless gods who once were human like us. They say that long ago on one of these planets, to an unidentified god and one of his goddess wives, a spirit child named Elohim was conceived. This spirit child was later born to human parents who gave him a physical body. Through obedience to Mormon teaching and death and resurrection, he proved himself worthy and was elevated to godhood as his father before him. Mormons believe that Elohim is their heavenly father and that he lives with his many goddess wives on a planet near a mysterious star called Kola. Here the god of Mormonism and his wives through endless celestial sex produced billions of spirit children. To decide their destiny, the head of the Mormon gods called a great heavenly council meeting. Both of Elohim's eldest sons were there. Lucifer and his brother Jesus. A plan was presented to build planet Earth where the spirit children would be sent to take on mortal bodies and learn good from evil. Lucifer stood and made his bid for becoming savior of this new world. Wanting the glory for himself, he planned to force everyone to become gods. Opposing the idea, the Mormon Jesus suggested giving man his freedom of choice, as on other planets. The vote that followed approved the proposal of the Mormon Jesus, who would become savior of the planet Earth. Enraged, Lucifer cunningly convinced one-third of the spirits destined for Earth to fight with him in revolt. Thus, Lucifer became the devil and his followers the demons. Sent to this world, they would forever be denied bodies of flesh and bone. Those who remained neutral in the battle were cursed to be born with black skin. This is the Mormon explanation for the Negro race. The spirits that fought most valiantly against Lucifer would be born into Mormon families on planet Earth. These would be the lighter-skinned people, or white and delightsome, as the Book of Mormon describes them. Early Mormon prophets taught that Elohim and one of his goddess wives came to earth as Adam and Eve to start the human race. Thousands of years later, Elohim, in human form once again, journeyed to earth from the star base Kola, this time to have sex with the Virgin Mary in order to provide Jesus with a physical body. After Jesus Christ grew to manhood, he took at least three wives, Mary, Martha, and Mary Magdalene. Through these wives, the Mormon Jesus, for whom Joseph Smith claimed direct descent, supposedly fathered a number of children before he was crucified. According to the Book of Mormon, after his resurrection, Jesus came to the Americas to preach to the Indians who the Mormons believe are really Israelites. Thus, the Jesus of Mormonism established his church in the Americas as he had in Palestine. By the year 421 A.D., the dark-skinned Indian Israelites, known as Lamanites, had destroyed all of the white Nephites in a number of great battles. The Nephites' records were supposedly written on golden plates and buried by Moroni, 
the last living Nephite in the hill Camorra. 1,400 years later, a young treasure seeker named Joseph Smith, who was known for his tall tales, claimed to have uncovered these same gold plates near his home in upstate New York. He is now honored by Mormons as a prophet because he claimed to have had visions from the spirit world in which he was commanded to organize the Mormon church because all Christian creeds were an abomination. It was Joseph Smith who originated most of these peculiar doctrines which millions today believe to be true. By maintaining a rigid code of financial and moral requirements and through performing secret temple rituals for themselves and the dead, the Latter-day Saints hope to prove their worthiness and thus become gods. The Mormons teach that everyone must stand at the final judgment before Joseph Smith, the Mormon Jesus, and Elohim. Those Mormons who were sealed in the eternal marriage ceremony expect to become polygamous gods in the celestial kingdom, rule over other planets, and spawn new families throughout eternity. The Mormons thank God for Joseph Smith, who claimed that he had done more for us than any other man, including Jesus Christ. The Mormons believe that he died as a martyr, shed his blood for us, so that we too, may become gods. Although there are thousands of Mormon churches throughout the world, there are only a few dozen Mormon temples. These massive structures play a vital role in the Mormon's quest for godhood. Mormons must engage in a series of occultic rituals inside the temple in order to become a candidate for godhood. Only an elite selection of devout Mormons are allowed to enter. To do so, the potential Mormon god must adhere to a strict code of ethics, including abstinence from tobacco or caffeine-based products, paying a full tithe to the Mormon church, and wearing of the magic Mormon underwear 24 hours a day. He has to receive a satisfactory interview from his bishop and from his stake president. There he's asked, or she is asked, certain rather penetrating questions about their worthiness, their morality. If he's a full tithe peer, that is the only way that we can be with our Heavenly Father. Otherwise, uh, we could not be in his presence. The motivation for the Mormon male to commit to such requirements is the promise of endless celestial sex with thousands of goddess wives, along with a personal planet to rule and reign over. However, Mormon males who fail to meet all of the necessary requirements risk being castrated upon their entrance to heaven. So you can see why the temple is so important to the Latter-day Saint. Because if he is worthy to go into the temple and there receive the sacred ordinances and covenants and keep them, he can eventually grow into becoming a god himself. Tell me who God the Father is to you. He is like you and I, every human being on the face of the earth. So is he a man? Yes, he is. How did he get to be God? He, uh, yeah, he's, a, he's perfect in every way. So if we are perfect, can we become like God? Yes, ma'am. Hello and welcome, everyone. This is Addie with Lewis and Sam, and we are so glad that you could join us today. And before I forget, I want everybody to like and subscribe. We'd appreciate it greatly. And as Chris says, I want to welcome you as fellow heirs and joint heirs with Christ. And we say yay and amen to that. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, today we are going to be covering another cultic series topic. And that series uh, topic today is Mormonism, or also known as Latter-day Saints. LDS. They prefer that term today because Mormonism has a little bit of a negative connotation to it. Yeah. So they prefer to be called Latter-day Saints today. So we are going to share with you a lot of very, very, uh, just really powerful information about this belief system, because today it is definitely flying under the banner of Christianity. And it's being readily embraced by people I never thought would embrace Mormonism. Never did. But we're going to mm -hmm. get started today. So, Sam, go ahead and tell, say hello to everyone. 
Hi guys, I hope you're all doing well and I hope that we can um, teach you guys about Mormonism and what how it started, what it believes, because I think like Addie said, it does fly under the radar. And you know, there if you know a Mormon, which I feel probably most people have met a Mormon somewhere in their life, you know, they're very nice people and they're moral. So you're like, oh, we have so much in common. But when you actually examine the beliefs, you'll realize that they're a cult. Uh, yes. Uh, um, uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, this th we, we do this uh, because we want to share with you what we know of uh, all these religions, and and, and it, it is a religion. And when you mention religion, that makes it a cult. We we mm -hmm. we do not have a religion. We are Christians, and we have put our faith in Jesus Christ. They call themselves a religion because they're not true Christianity. Amen. Amen. And that is so true. So what we've done is we have broken up our program and I hope we can stay within the time constraints because we have a lot to say. But we have broken up our program today uh, in three parts. We're going to do Mormonism, their history and their beliefs. And then we will do a, a section about the common cultic beliefs of Mormonism with Roman Catholicism, Islam, Scientology ancient alien theory, so on and mm -hmm. so forth. And then, of course, <clears throat> within that, we are going to share some scripture that refutes what the Mormon uh, uh, religion teaches. And then our, our last topic, I think is very, very relevant today, is how the Mormon church, the Mormon religion, is, is co-opting Hollywood and movies. <clears throat> to indoctrinate people into their belief system along with Roman Catholics and evangelicals. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about the Mormons, what they believe <clears throat> and their history as well. I have this title, once a cult, now no longer a cult because that's how a lot of people see Mormonism mm. today. So Sam, what do you have for it? Well, just to how Mormonism started, it was started by Joseph Smith. He said that he found golden plates and then he translated what those golden plates said. And it was the accurate like word of God because the Bible was corrupted. Um, and basically, just to give like what they believe about Jesus and God. So God was a man who obtained Godhood. He then had... Jesus and Lucifer, they are his children. So Jesus and Lucifer are brothers. They both had plans for how the world could be saved. Um, Lucifer's idea was rejected. Jesus's idea was accepted. So Lucifer caused an uprising in heaven. And um, some angels sided with Jesus. Some angels sided with um, Lucifer. And the angels that stayed neutral became black people and were cast down to earth as black people. So um, that's just an overview of Mormonism. It's a very good overview of it. Yeah, Lewis, what do you have for us? Uh, well, they they talk about the, uh, he received uh, revelations from the angel uh, Moroni. And, and Galatians 1.8 says, but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Okay, so the Bible starts out by telling you, if an angel comes and tells you something different, it's not from God. So that right there tells you that um, Mormons are not from God. You know, uh, mm -hmm. Addie mentioned that they changed their name. Uh, they like to use the Latter-day Saints. Um, <clears throat> they, they've changed so many things, and, mm -hmm. and, and our Bible has never changed. You know, God's word has never changed. Um, and just what Sam said, just just what it, what she said, to tell you, you run away from uh, these people. Uh, you, you know, the Jesus, Lucifer, uh, God having a wife, black people being bad. You know, th this this mm -hmm. is a, a racist, and just that alone, okay. And they've changed all of that because they no longer believe in any of that stuff, which means that. They don't want you to think that they don't believe. They still believe in that, uh, but th they change uh, so so they can go along with uh, w with whatever is going on right now. It's like a politician. They take a poll. Well, people don't like this, so we, we'll take it out. 
um, very violent past. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, they 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 don't use the the word of God as their only source. It's like Catholics. Okay, mm -hmm. they have the Book of Mormon. Um, they have um, they have the 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 Bible of Book of Mormon. They have the doctrines of Co and covenants and pearl of great price mm -hmm. that they take from and they follow. We follow the word of God because it is he, God who wrote it, um, he, who had it written. You know, Paul wrote it, Matthew wrote it, but it's the word of God. When you read it, you God is talking to you. It's not Paul talking to you. It's God speaking to you. So that's why we don't think that any of these uh, uh, religions are, are real Christianity. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. And that's why it's important to take God's word as God's mm. word and we test everything through God's word, everything, because it mm. is perfect. It mm -hmm. is it is the perfect word of God. It will not lead us astray. It will not have us chasing after uh, false teachings and doctrines. So if you look at anything, you should always, always make sure that you go back to God's word and see if it if it lines up perfectly with scripture. If it doesn't, scripture is always right and whatever you are studying is wrong. So let me Amen. let me just add a few more things to some of the beliefs of Mormonism. Okay, they uh they do they do reject the biblical understanding of the Trinity. That mm -hmm. um, uh, they believe that the Trinity mm -hmm. is three separate gods or spirits. Mm -hmm. So they reject that. They believe that Elohim resides near a star called Kolob. Uh, that gets into ancient alien theory and all that kind of stuff. They do believe that Elohim and all Mormon temple priests become gods with multiple goddess wives. They populate their own planet, which I think Sam uh, alluded to. The goddess wives are perpetually virgins, perpetually giving birth to spirit babies. Now, the reason why Mormons have large families is because mm -hmm. they are told that they have to create human babies for those spirit mm -hmm. babies to inhabit. So you have that, which is just odd on itself. Uh, the mother goddess thing, we were talking about this before we started recording, the mother goddess thing. They have a yeah. mother goddess named Elah, E-L-A-H, and they call her the queen. They call her Heavenly Mother. She <clears throat> is the mother of all human spirits and wife of God the Father. And they are collectively known as the Heavenly Parents. Jesus' atonement, here's another common thread. Jesus' atonement and suffering, his suffering. The atonement came through his suffering, not through his sacrifice on the cross, which is <clears throat> very similar to the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church said it is Jesus' suffering before the cross that gained you salvation. Mm -hmm. And so Mormonism has the same thing. Jesus atoned for man's sin in the garden of Gethsemane is what they say mm -hmm. in his suffering and yeah. not through his sacrifice on the cross. Mormons teach that sin. Now listen to this. This is shocking. Mormons teach that sin was Elohim's plan, not man's choice. That's Calvinism, friends. Yeah. That is Calvinism. It, it's mm -hmm. amazing to me how many of these line up. And then temple priests and celestial marriage. Remember, we were talking about there will be no have, uh, no marriage in heaven, but they teach in celestial marriages. And then mm -hmm. salvation is a progressive process. They do not separate justification and sanctification. It is together because it's based on the law and good works. So mm -hmm. there's a little bit of that. And uh, Sam, do you have a little more maybe that you could add to it? Do you have anything else? Um, well, I guess talking more just about what they believe about Jesus. So how he yeah. was conceived was yes. uh, God the Father came down and had sex with the Virgin Mary. And then she had Jesus. Jesus had multiple wives while he was here on Earth. Um, and after his resurrection, he came to America and taught the Indians. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna get yeah. into that. Yeah. yeah, I am. Thank you for mentioning it. <laughs> yeah. So, are you done with that? Okay, Lou. Yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Any, any additional yeah. information about the the beliefs or the or the history? 
Yeah, they. You, you know, you mentioned the the marriage, and we go back yeah. to Matthew twenty two uh, when they're asking Jesus. You know, if this woman is married and her husband dies, and and back in uh, Deuteronomy, I think it tells it tells you when that happens, she does not marry a stranger. She'll marry a brother. Mm -hmm. She'll have a, a a child, and that child will then take over the inheritance. And 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 Jesus uh, said. Uh, <clears throat> You know, Jesus answered and said unto them, You do err, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither married nor are given in marriage, but are angels of God in heaven. There is no marriage in heaven. You know, we're all individuals. We're all brothers and sisters uh, in mm -hmm. the presence of the Lord. And and, this, and these are the uh, Sadducees that ask them that because they only believe in the book of uh, Moses, the five books of Moses. And so they mm -hmm. didn't believe in the resurrection. They were trying to trick them. And it, 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 it does, you know, in Exodus 3, 6, uh, God says uh, to, to Moses, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He's telling them he's the God of the living. Okay. Mm -hmm. they, they, this be, they still exist. Although they have physically died. So it does talk about the resurre uh, resurrection. Um, and so you have a misunderstanding of what the word is, and so do these people do, do too. So to them, whoever's president, okay, mm -hmm. is, is a prophet. Uh, he's a seer. He gets revelations mm -hmm. from God. Now we know uh, all these things about revelation from God. We see it. We see it with televangelists. You know, I, I have a new revelation. Uh, now, when someone comes to you and tells you that, how do you know that it's from God? How can they prove that it's from mm -hmm. God? And they cannot. There's no new revelations. Everything has been written down. God has told us everything we need to know. Um, so when someone comes up to you and says, you know, I have something from God for you. Um, yeah, it, it's in the Bible. You just have to read the Bible. You know, it's, 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 not, it's, it's nothing, it, um, pro, you know, uh, Solomon, there's nothing new under the sun. Amen. That is so, so true. So, so true. And, and the more that we learn, the more that we grow in Christ, the more we realize that there is nothing new under the sun. We really <laughs> understand that. Now, you guys mentioned two things that I was, if I had time, I was going to bring up. Sam talked about, um, uh, you talked about Jesus appearing in America. Okay. Yes. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. And then, and then Lewis talked about a Mormon presidency. Well, this kind of goes all together. So I'll be able to talk about those two things that y'all just triggered me. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to be able to talk about those two things at one time. And I'm going to try and make it quick. Okay. So basically this, the Mormons have a distorted view of the United States history. Mm -hmm. They do not believe in the, the American history that we know is historically accurate. They have their own U.S. Yeah history. Mm -hmm. Here it is. Mormons believe that the United States was founded and established by Mormons on the religion of Mormonism. Okay, here's how they get to that point. A Nephite prophet named Mormon gave the golden tablets to his son Moroni. In 1805, Joseph Smith Jr. found those tablets and he creates and establishes the Mormonism we have of today. Well, what happened is in 600 B.C., this is what uh, the Mormons teach. In 600 B.C., B.C., um, two, the two lost tribes of Israel. Did you know that God had lost two of his tribes? Yeah. No, I didn't know that. How unfortunate. The, yes. The two lost tribes of Israel came to America. Okay. And those two lost tribes became the Mormons that we know of today. One tribe was the American Indian and the other tribe became uh, the Mormon. So here, here's the story, okay? Um, in approximately 600 BC, an Israelite named Lehi traveled from the Middle East to the Americas. Lehi's descendants divided into two tribes. They are considered the two lost tribes of Israel, the Nephites and the Lamanites. They warred against each other, and the nomadic Lamanites are now considered the ancestors of the Native Americans. After Jesus' resurrection in or about 33 AD, uh, 
the, the, the Mormons teachings say that Jesus appeared to the Nephites in America mm -hmm. before he ascended. Okay. So the Mormons do not have the same historical view of America, founding of America that we do. They have a corrupt view. What does that corrupt view do? It gives them the understanding to tell people we are the original Americans. We are the ones. Without us, there would be no America. So you fast forward a little bit. Uh, Joseph Smith, right before he was killed, was running on a third party political, um, a third, a third party political um, uh, group that he started because he wanted to run for president of the United States because the White Horse prophecy says, this is yeah. literally what it says, uh, oh when, when the Constitution is dangling by a thread and a, a, a Mormon president will be seated in the White House and he will save mm -hmm. America. So that's why you have more like Romney, his father, George mm -hmm. Romney, ran in the 60s. Romney ran twice because they were trying to fulfill that White Horse prophecy. Why do they want to do that? Here's the crux of it all. They want everybody in the United States to be under their Mormon theocracy. Okay, because their Mormon beliefs go over and above the Constitution of the United States. See, so if you get a president that's a Mormon, he is going to have to abide by the teachings of Joseph Smith and not the Constitution. So theocracy basically is socialism in disguise. The Roman Catholic Church mm. wants socialism. Islam wants socialism. And so does the Mormons. So that kind of real quick in a nutshell, that is that history. If you ever wonder why Glenn Beck is on the verge of worshiping the founding fathers. This is why, yeah. because yeah. they believe that those founding fathers founded this country for them. So next time you see Glenn Beck and his hyper patriotism, understand that. Mm -hmm. That's why he's doing that. So anyway, that is that little bit of, I wanted to, to, to put that in there. Thank y'all for mentioning it because I probably would have forgotten. But um, anyway, so, so here we go. Let's go ahead and talk about the, um, the Mormon connection to Hollywood and visual arts and the movie industry. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk a little bit about that because there's been a lot of activity lately. So Sam, go for it. Well, probably the most uh, influential and popular one there is at the moment would be The Chosen. You look troubled. I am. You're losing something. I know what that's like. What are you losing? Time. I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Someone touched me. If you are really the one who is to come, should we look for someone else? Go and tell John what you hear and see. Who is it? Why did we stop? It's him. I'm Judas of Kiriot. I have chosen you twelve as my apostles. Don't feel any different? I don't need you to feel anything to do great things. What is stirring in your hearts, in the middle of such division and unrest, is Father God being revealed to you? Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. A scourge of false prophecy must Stop. Jesus, if you do not renounce your words, we will have no choice but to follow the law of Moses. I am the law of Moses. The hair for Jesus of Nazareth. More valuable than gold, more precious than rubies. Force them out. We are still Rome. Every 
anyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. I'm the one who caused their hunger. I should be the one to feed them. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Hey there, I'm Dallas, creator of The Chosen, and I just wanted to tell you real quick that episodes one and two of season three launch in theaters November 18th. Yes, theaters, before coming to The Chosen app along with the rest of the season. And if you're not caught up, please be sure to watch season three. Um, and it is rather interesting when you tell uh, Christians who like The Chosen that Mormons are involved in it. They make every excuse under the sun for Dallas Jenkins. He doesn't, you know, agree with them. He's trying to get them saved, blah de blah de blah But if you actually listen to Dallas Jenkins, he's like, he calls all of the Mormon men that he works with brothers, which usually that's what you do with fellow Christians. He has literally said that if Mormons and Catholics and Christians are all watching this show, that means that we all love the same Jesus. He downplays the differences that there is between Christianity and Mormonism. He also talks out of both sides of his mouth because he's he, you know, calls them brothers. And then he's like, but I don't think they're Christian, but they're brothers. So he's Dallas Jenkins is very annoying. Um, <laughs> um, I agree. But, <laughs> but um, you like, you know, and Dallas is, you know, probably trying to be like, there's no Mormon influence on the show. There has to be. There has to be, because why else would they be giving you the money to make the show, and why else would Mormons be watching the show? It's because there's going to be a Mormon influence. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Lewis, what have you got for us? Yeah, you know, it's funny because there's a, a, a long-running uh, Broadway show. It's the Book of Mormons, you know, yeah. and, and, and they sing a song, and I, I cannot remember the name of it, but it's... It tells you who they are uh, and what they believe in. And um, I, I'm not saying that Christians are not watching The Chosen, but they should watch it the same way I watch Superman movies, knowing that mm -hmm. it's not real, you know, for entertainment purposes. Because a real uh, a, a Bible-believing Christian, I, I saw The Chosen, I must have seen less than 15 minutes of it. I, I couldn't take it. I, mm -hmm. I had to turn it off. I, I couldn't. I watched it, so. three episodes or like four episodes, and it was torture. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're, you're, you're I was like screaming at the TV. <laughs> yeah. um, so you, you have all making this religion uh, very popular on TV because it takes away from the real Christianity. Okay, um, it, it, it appears that the chosen is, uh, you know, it's, it's a portrayal of Jesus Christ, and people love that. Uh, and and what it does, it it, it tugs at your your emotional strings. Mm -hmm. um, I remember when I first started, there was a movie called Gabriel about a child that you know, and he was the angel Gabriel. And at the end of the movie, he stands up on the uh, an altar in the church, which there's it's just a building and it's not an altar. Uh, and and he takes out his uh, like Chris likes to say, his chicken wings, feathery wings. <laughs> There's people from the congregation that I was member, and they love that movie, and, and they cried in the movie, mm -hmm. but it's not a biblical movie, and it's an emotional thing. And this is why the, 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 the Bible is very specific about not going with your feelings, about not listening to your heart. Mm -hmm. If there's a conflict between what you feel and what the Word says, you go with the Word. Just like Addie said in the beginning, if somebody tells you something that's against what the Word says, you go with the Word. And, and this is all emotions, uh, trying to get people to, you know, be one world religion. And that's, that's right. what it comes down to. That's right. Amen. And, and, you know, what's sad is a lot of people are completely unaware that they're involved with the creating creation, mm -hmm. uh, the progressive creation of the one world religion of Antichrist. They have no idea. <laughs> They really don't. And yeah, Lewis, I agree with you. I think a lot of a lot of Christians do watch these. The, uh, you can watch certain programs yeah. and separate your emotions from it. But here's the mm -hmm. here's the dangerous thing about about movies and TV series that say they're biblical or they're of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Most people, most people get their doctrine from yes. movies. 
Yeah. And that's the scary part. That's yeah. the scary part. They get their doctrine. So they are swayed by every wind of doctrine. And yeah. that is, that's why, because, you know, you have the visual and you have the emotional and you mm -hmm. have the auditory. So mm -hmm. you have three, you have all of these feelings, you know, all of this uh, wound up together that helps. And people get their theology and their doctrine from movies and they don't mm -hmm. know God's word. So they can't. Mm -hmm tell the difference they think well you know the guy's playing jesus you know so yeah. one of my things was was the ecumenism that uh, mm -hmm. that uh, angel studios is creating and it's because it gives them um it gives them the appearance lds the appearance of authenticity you know when you mm -hmm. have people like roman catholic jim caviezel roman catholic um because he he was in sound of freedom you have Roman mm -hmm. Catholic Jonathan Ro Rumi, who uh, who is very divided, and he has I can tell you he has brought in a lot of people into Catholicism since he started mm -hmm. playing Jesus on the Chosen mm -hmm. because people follow him outside of that series, and that's yeah. what's dangerous. Then you have mm -hmm. you have the the you have the movie um, the Jesus Revolution, okay, where Jonathan Rumi plays a homosexual. Yeah. And you have you have people like Greg Laurie involved in it. So there's that one world apostate religion that's being formed right before our very eyes. And what are they using? They're using the visual, the auditory, mm -hmm. and the emotional. And that's yeah. how you reach people. And and when people are ignorant of God's word by their own free will choice to be ignorant of God's word, they're easily deceived i mean that's mm -hmm. a given so because you have let me give you i'll give you an example this i mean it's it's snowballing yes it's increasing yes but it's been happening for decades billy graham counseled billy graham counseled mm -hmm. glenn beck and told glenn beck mormon new age roman catholic glenn beck that he assured beck that he was a christian yeah. And after mm -hmm. Billy Graham assured Beck that he was a Christian, all of the uh, the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association um, uh, websites and everything removed Mormonism from the the list cult. So you have you have that that it's been going on, but it's really much more visible today. It really mm -hmm. is. And then let's talk a little bit, just in as as we uh, we're we're going to be kind of finishing up here pretty quick, I'm sure. Uh, let's talk about the connection with ancient alien theory. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so what do we talk about when we talk about the connection between ancient alien theory and stuff? So go ahead, Sam, give us what you have on that. I know. mean, they they literally think that they're going to become gods of other planets, and that God was again a man that got godhood and then he made earth so there's a whole i mean really when i look at mormonism and what they believe i feel like i'm reading some like really weird christian sci-fi thing <laughs> that's obviously not doctrinally sound <laughs> um, it's yeah i'm like i don't it's like you're yeah but it's it's really weird that they obviously like want to go to other planets and that they, you know, in a way they think God is an alien. Um, yeah. Not that they would actually say that, but something that I just thought of is that during the millennial, when we have our glorified bodies, we're going to be able to explore the universe and go to all different galaxies and, and planets. But they're, the Mormons are like, well, we're going to get there because we're going to become little gods by our good works, by what we did. So they want the same thing as Christians, but they aren't going to get it unless they become a Christian themselves. Amen. Amen. Lewis, what do you have on ancient aliens and ETs and all that? Yeah, like 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 you said, you know, you you, you follow, you know, uh, the red flags, and and they, mm -hmm. they all they all come down to the fact of aliens. Uh, mm. uh, you, you know, the the Mormons believe in having many wives here on Earth, many wives later on. Muslim belief and 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 sex is such a big attraction. We we know this yeah. from uh, Jim yeah. Jones, uh, for and you know Dave Koresh, which we, we mm -hmm. talk about. 
and, and it's always the same thing. Uh, we, we, we have a, a pope now, and they've always believed this, that you know, talks about there's aliens out there, and we have to evangelize them. You know? So it all comes down to extraterrestrials, because when Jesus takes up his church, when we go up, this is what they're going to say, yeah. that extraterrestrials took away the bad people, the haters, okay? So mm -hmm. they're going to be free from us, and then they can become, they can start to become the perfect people that they're, they they, they want to be since we, we're no longer here. Exactly. That's exactly true. So, uh, yeah. And, you know, ancient alien theory is very, very prevalent in, in almost every cult. If you study every cult, there is some belief or some background belief of some kind of, like Sam said, it's perfect because you feel like you're, you're reading a science fiction comic book. You know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Scientology, LDS, uh, uh, Roman Catholicism, uh, new, the New Age, Heaven's Gate. We just did mm -hmm. Heaven's Gate, right? Uh, and they are Hinduism, Buddhism. They all have some form of belief of interdimensional or extraterrestrial beings. So that's another common belief. So let's talk about as we we're going to come to a close here. But uh, let's do a little bit of common beliefs in all of these religions, right? Roman Catholicism, LDS, Islam, Scientology, New mm -hmm. Age, Ancient Alien. Let's talk about that, some of the common beliefs. Let me begin by saying they all have rituals, rites, sacraments, law-keeping, relics, holy garments, mm -hmm. or accessories. Almost all of them do. They all believe in apostolic secession that uh, there are apostles today that can change and abrogate God's word. They all believe in that. They believe in attaining a divine godhood state. Now, mm -hmm. let me read this real quick half of it. Catholic Catechism number 460 says the following. For the son of man became man so that we might become God. The only begotten son of God wanting to make us sharers in his divinity mm -hmm assumed our nature so that he made man might make men gods. That is in the catechism of the Catholic church. Go look it up. Don't take my word for it. Go look it up. The next thing is, um, is that they, 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 are, they have an effort to establish the kingdom of God on earth. How many mm -hmm. religions, how many denominations we know, we mm -hmm. know today, that is their goal, is to establish God's kingdom on earth. Can you think of a few, Sam? Some of the I denominations mean the first, we've been? The first one that comes to mind is the um, Apostolic Reformation. The Apostolic Reformation. <laughs> because, yeah. and, and the NAR, because they're all about the seven mandates and building God's kingdom here on earth, which, again, is exactly. nowhere in the Bible. So. <laughs> okay. That's right, right. What about you, Lewis? <laughs> yeah, and... We, we go back to the word of God when it comes to this. You know, people want to save the earth. They want to save the animals. They want to save every, everyone. Um, mm -hmm. And this is the problem. We can't save ourselves. That's why we need Jesus' uh, sacrifice on the cross, you know, to take our, our sins away. Um, we're not going to be God. And, and, and I understand that because before becoming Christians, we all wanted to have certain amount of power, and, and that's what it comes to. You go to these churches, you know, the Kenneth Copeland, and you see the power that he has, mm -hmm. and they support him because they want the same power. They want the money. They, they want the, the mansions. They, you know, th this is what they want. They, and they think they can uh, establish the kingdom of God here on earth. The kingdom of God will be established by God. We will be here on earth. But it's not now. It, it is not us. And, and all these religions, are, they, it's the common thread, like you say. They want to make you think that you're going to be more than what you are now. And we will become more than what we are, are right now. But we do it through Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's the difference. You see, that's the yeah. difference. They want to attain godhood. Mm -hmm. Without and, and the glorified state. And, you know, that they want to get to that next level. By circum, but they circumvent the cross because they mm -hmm. don't want to believe that they're sinners in need of a savior. They don't mm -hmm. want to believe that. So that gives us a very good uh, um, transition into finishing this up. 
So Sam, share with those that are watching today that maybe are searching. They want to know biblical truth. What would you tell mm -hmm. them? Well, um, quote Ephesians 2, 8, 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. We cannot save ourselves. Before I became a Christian, and obviously before you guys became a Christian, we were sinners, and we liked it, and we were good at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we all came to the place where we realized I'm a sinner and I need someone to pay for that sin. I need someone to get rid of that sin. And that someone is Christ. He died for us on the cross. He shed his blood. He was buried, rose and ascended. And all we have to do is believe that he did it for us. It is that simple. Amen. Amen. Lewis. Um, yeah, like Sam says, we have to admit that we're sinners and that we, we, we're sinning against an eternal God. So our sins are always before him. Mm -hmm. So we need something that will have him look at us other than what we really are on the inside. We, we're not good. That's what the Bible says. We're not good. And we do not have the credit to pay for our own sins. Uh, we can spend an eternity trying to pay for them, but we can't. Because only God can forgive sin. Uh, and, and since man committed the sin, God became a man and took on the sins of the world. Okay, So we would not have to pay for something we couldn't pay for anyway. Yeah. And why we, we do these videos and we don't want you to listen to us. And we say this all the time. Go to the word of God because that is the truth. Uh, don't listen to what a man has to say. Listen to what God has to say and what he has said in his word. That is where you find the truth. God is the truth. Jesus is the truth. Mm -hmm. It's very simple. You don't have to do any ritual. You know, um, the story was talking about all the rituals they have to do, the clothes they have to be put on. You don't have to do that. It just call on to Jesus and, and he will be there for you. And we're talking about an eternity with the Father doing a lot of the things that these people want to do right now. Yes. But we can only do that mm -hmm. for Jesus Christ. He's yeah, our Lord, yeah. he's our Savior, he's our Creator. We don't need anybody but him. And the truth is in his word. Amen, amen. Yes, and it's true. If you, listen, there are, you know, there, there, are, there are two, truly two uh, spiritual religions. And I hate to use mm -hmm. the word religion, but there's two that you have you have Christianity where God became a man to save his creation. And then you have all other religions, spiritual mm -hmm. movement, religiosity, whatever you want to call it, whatever you want to call them. What is it? It's the complete polar opposite of that. It's man became a God to save himself. Mm -hmm. Friends. We cannot save ourselves. We can't. We are sinners in desperate need of a savior. And like Lewis and Sam just shared with you, that's the biblical gospel. Measure everything by his word and nothing else. Okay, God's word at his word and do away with everything else. That's the most important thing has never failed me in my 38 years of walking with the Lord. So we do thank you for joining us today. We pray that it was a blessing to you. Uh, please leave your comments. We'd like to hear from you. And uh, we hope that you stay with us because there is some more on our series about cults coming up. So until the next time, we pray that you have an incredibly blessed day. And Maranatha. God bless. God bless.